It's been a while, hasn't it? Aside from the burnout I had after watching and reviewing more Spielberg movies than I could stomach, the most notable reason I've been gone for so long is that I got a shiny new computer that has captivated my attention for a while now. Do you want to know what the first thing I played on this computer was? Portal with RTX. It was a great excuse to revisit one of my favorite franchises and test the capabilities of my 4070 at the same time, and after a few short hours, I always forget just how short the first Portal game is, I moved on to bigger and flashier games. Little did I know that there was a hunger seated deep inside of me, but it would be another few weeks before I noticed. As of writing this, today is that day, a few weeks later, where I decided I wanted to play all of the Portal games and talk about them just because I like them. This will be a decently long journey, and I'm basically just reviewing these as I play them, so there may not be a lot of structure to this video going forward, but there's a lot to talk about, so let's go ahead and get started. I didn't feel the need to replay the 2008 version of Portal, because aside from the graphics, everything is perfectly identical in Portal with RTX. I have so much appreciation for the first Portal game and how it accomplishes so much within its two hour runtime. GLaDOS genuinely seems nice at the beginning of the game, and the twist of her being evil leading up to the final boss was no doubt a major surprise to anyone jumping in blind to this game. The puzzles are smart, the application of everything you learn to escape into the backrooms is ingenious, and the final boss… is fine. GLaDOS fight is probably the weakest point in the game because the mechanics of the fight are something you learned only minutes before, instead of everything you've practiced throughout the game, and incinerating her emotional cores isn't really all that satisfying. That having been said, the revenge fantasy of putting pieces of her into a fire after what she made us do to the companion cube is certainly satisfying in its own way. I love that little cube. And then there's the song, oh mama, Still Alive is such an emotional roller coaster and has literally brought me to tears before with how bittersweet it is. I think every game should end with a bittersweet song that reflects on the journey you went on throughout the game. So Portal is awesome, and there's really no denying it. It would be a miracle if a sequel could come along and deliver an experience just as awesome and also three times as long, but alas, games like that only live in our dreams. So instead, we have to play... Yeah, we're gonna be talking about fan games too, baby. Portal Revolution is the brand spanking new Portal 2 mod that served as inspiration for me to play all of these games. It's also the first Portal 2 mod that I've ever played, and it set the bar at a pretty respectable place. The story follows unnamed woman, or the player, and her new companion, Sterling, where you're a part of a so-called emergency response team on your way to fix something. About halfway in, you get double-crossed by Sterling and team up with an Australian corps named Conley to take down Sterling and his plan to revive the great GLaDOS. It's an interesting story, but it's also pretty apparent how similar those plot beats are to the Portal 2 story. But hey, the gameplay is great and a perfect balance of difficulty. There's a lot of fun puzzle concepts in play like the gel showers and fuse boxes, and there are thankfully no absurdly hard puzzles to get frustrated over. It would almost be a proper Portal sequel if it just had that tighter, less derivative story. You could easily tell it's a fan game, especially in the voice acting and dialogue department, but you'll see soon enough that that's just kind of par for the course. I have a great deal of respect for the community that made this game, and if by any slim chance one of those creators is hearing me talk about this, thank you. Truly, you did a great job. Kudos to the puzzle designers for dozens and dozens of puzzles that were maddeningly hard. Portal Stories Mel is the grandpappy of the major Portal mods, and it has become the standard for how to do this type of game well. Does that make it the best of the Portal mods? I'm not entirely sure, but I think my answer is no, not anymore. The story follows Mel, an Olympian who agrees to be a test subject for Aperture Science in its glory days. The test goes wrong, of course, and you wake up to find the complex decayed and abandoned, and the rest of the story is trying to find a way out with the help of Virgil, a surprisingly loyal core. I say surprisingly because this is basically the one and only Portal game where you don't get betrayed by anyone. As novel as the story is, the game doesn't strike a great balance between the story, gameplay, walking sessions, and crazy set pieces. The first chunk of the game has a great atmosphere to it where you get to explore the higher levels of Aperture Science before and after the facility went to shit, but the game doesn't give you a whole lot to do in these sections other than look around. The latter half of the game gives you a lot more to do, but lacks some variety as it goes from brutally hard puzzles to even more brutally hard puzzles. 
The final chapter is the one place that balances everything extremely well, with an epic final boss against the security system Igis that incorporates every crazy thing you've learned and done so far. Which means, it's better than the original Portal in that regard. So, despite being less balanced than more recent mods, Portal Stories Mel is still an exceptional experience that brings a real challenge to us, the Portal fans. Portal Reloaded was probably not the right mod experience to end on, it's severely lacking in story and is considerably shorter than the other games, it's about as long as Portal 1, but it still manages to have some personality despite all of that. The entire story is basically summarized as, the player is woken up to do time travel testing chambers. That's right, the gimmick of this game is time travel. It works as a third portal that you can place mostly anywhere to travel between past and present. The puzzles they make from this concept are alright, and they do strike a pretty solid difficulty, but I was kind of expecting more new mechanics that took advantage of the time travel. Maybe it's because I played Mel and Revolution before this, but when those games add new gameplay elements and cohesion with the ongoing story, returning to the same old puzzle mechanics feels a bit regressive, especially considering they didn't even bring back elements from Portal 2, like the gels. Also, the finale is kind of completely worthless. They have you figure a way out of your inevitable doom, similar to the fire scene in Portal 1, and then it just... ends. They tied it into Half-Life in the ending cinematic, which was a nice touch, but you couldn't make a less climactic ending if you tried. At the end of the day though, I liked the time travel mechanic a lot and the game served its purpose as a fun pack of puzzles. It's a solid experience overall, but definitely the least inspired of all the Portal mods. Alright, I know what you're thinking. None of this is canon to the genuine Portal universe. Well, would you rather me start talking about the Half-Life games instead? Those are canon! As much as I like those games, I only want to talk about the Portal-focused ones, and the video is called The Portal Franchise, not The Portal Canon, for a reason. That specification is extremely important to distinguish because there are still more games to talk about that are also unfortunately not considered canon even though they were made in part by Valve and I think it would be a lot more fun if they were canon. Let's start with the weirdest one. Bridge Constructor is a franchise with four of their own games and two collaborations, Portal and The Walking Dead. I haven't played any of those other games, but a few years ago I found myself buying Bridge Constructor Portal and... Somehow it's my most played game in the franchise? I was addicted to beating every single puzzle in this silly little game, and before I knew it, a month of my life vanished and I had nearly every achievement in this game. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy every second of it. There is a fantastic variety of puzzles that would make a seasoned Portal player cry, some of which are really hard and had to be building monstrous death courses that the stick people would only barely survive. There's something extremely satisfying about having a successful run, so satisfying in fact that I bought the DLC and spent another two weeks of my life in this addictive hellscape. There's pretty much no story to speak of other than the fact that your character is working his way up in the company, so the enjoyment lies entirely in the gameplay. Apparently this game isn't canon, despite how harmless it would be to the storylines as it adds nothing to the world besides the existence of bridges. I guess that would dramatically change the lore of the catwalks in every Portal game, but god forbid someone tries to explain where they all came from. Did you know that Portal 2 and GLaDOS play a significant factor in LEGO Dimensions? In fact, it was my first introduction to the franchise. It wasn't great or anything, and it was about as simple and non-threatening as LEGO games tend to be, but I'm certainly grateful that it got me interested in playing Portal 2. I didn't actually feel like digging out my copy of LEGO Dimensions, especially considering that I don't actually own the LEGO Portal DLC to it, but I'd feel remiss if I didn't at least bring it up. If you've never seen anything about it, listen to the end credits song you wouldn't know. It is just as beautiful and catchy as Want You Gone and Still Alive, and I'm so happy they went all out with that song. The only other Portal games I didn't play for this video were the various VR games, because I've never been smart enough to learn how to connect my Oculus Quest to my Steam account. Valve has officially released two VR games set within Aperture Science, being The Lab and Aperture Hand Lab. The Lab is more of a mini-game collection with GLaDOS, Peabody, and Atlas that showcases some silly things you can do in VR, while Aperture Hand Lab is a 15-minute micro-story that teaches you how to use VR. So, they're both just tech demos. Weirdly enough, the most Portal-like VR game is a sequel to a game we've already talked about, Portal Stories Mel. Taking place around the same time as Mel, Portal Stories VR is just a couple of standard Portal levels without the actual Portal gun. Does the lack of actual portals make the game worse? 
I don't know, I haven't played it. Moving on. Aperture Desk Job is the tech demo for the Steam Deck. Luckily, I have one of those, so I've actually been able to play it. This game is about as short and simple as Aperture Hand Lab, with the added benefit of getting to hear brand new voice lines from the wonderful Cave Johnson. Have I finally run out of games to talk about? Oh, duh, I've clearly forgotten one. A pretty important one, too. Mario is a silly little crossover between Portal and Super Mario Bros. that I used to play on my laptop in middle school. You could choose between standard Mario with a portal gun or standard portal levels in 2D. Neither are particularly great, I'll admit, but it's still an inspired crossover at the end of the day. Alright, let's talk about Portal 2. I had to end the video and my Portal franchise binge as a whole with Portal 2, because by all means, it's the MVP. This is the game where all of the puzzle mechanics work perfectly, like the light bridges and the excursion funnels and the different types of gel. The rich atmosphere of the decayed and abandoned facility can show just how thoughtful they were about every square inch of the world building. There's so much interpretable history left behind in the ruins and murals made by who knows what. I love how the first chapter of the game takes you through rooms from the first game, where the areas that were once challenging puzzles are now just deteriorating husks of their former self. But none of that would be nearly as delicious and sweet without the beautiful, intense, dramatic roller coaster of a story. You see, I love Wheatley, and I love just how earnestly he's trying to help you escape in the first half of the game. Exploring the abandoned facility alongside his hilariously stupid dialogue makes the opening sequence extremely enjoyable when usually the opening levels of a game can be very tedious and uneventful. After you speedrun your way through the facility, you'll find the lifeless corpse of GLaDOS, and for just a few moments, you can find solace in the fact that she's dead. Your tormentor can't hurt you anymore. Until Wheatley fucks up and you get one of the best oh shit moments in all of gaming. The revival of GLaDOS is one hell of an intense and thrilling sequence, leading to round two of testing with GLaDOS. My favorite thing about this section of the game is getting to hear GLaDOS' true, uninhibited thoughts and aggressions. Sorry about the mess. I've really let the place go since you killed me. By the way, thanks for that. Sarcasm self-test complete. Oh good, that's back online. She is such a catty bitch, and I laugh out loud every time she calls me fat. Look at you, sailing through the air majestically, like an eagle, piloting a blimp. The reveal that Wheatley is alive and trying to save you is a big relief, and the escape sequence is a really fun way to wrap everything up. Defeating GLaDOS is pretty easy, and Wheatley gladly sends you on your way out of the facility. <laughs> Until he changes his mind. What I love about this scene and Wheatley's character as a whole is that he never planned on betraying you, but because of how dumb he is and the power trip he gets from running the facility, it doesn't take much for him to flip on you and send you falling to the depths of Aperture. Oh yeah, and I can't forget about Potato GLaDOS, which I only now notice was foreshadowed earlier in the game with the Take Your Daughter to Work Day dioramas just before you reach her. If you thought the first half of the game was amazing, which I very much do, the second half is even more amazing. The first half of the game takes place in the familiar testing locations from the first game, however abandoned they might be, but the second half takes you to the depths of the abandoned facility and shows a whole new side to Aperture Science. Retroactively narrated by the long-dead Aperture Science CEO Cave Johnson, who is voiced by my beloved J.K. Simmons, the trials you face down here are much more open-ended and are clearly human-designed and robot-free. This is where the gels first come into play, and you slowly learn all about the Enrichment Center as you tour its remains. Eventually, you find GLaDOS Potato, who was stolen away by a bird earlier, and you both begrudgingly team up to take control of the facility back from Wheatley. Teaming up with the villain is one of my favorite story tropes of all time, and I honestly don't think any story does it better than this. From this point on, GLaDOS stops being your bitter rival and slowly becomes your mouthy best friend. Along the way, GLaDOS learns that she was once the wife of Cave Johnson named Caroline. She was turned into the machine that runs the facility upon her death, an afterlife that Cave insisted she have instead of him. Caroline is still a part of her now, explaining why her feelings and her newfound conscience are so unlike the rest of the machines in the facility. We also learned that Wheatley was an inhibiting core that made GLaDOS less evil and much more stupid in the past, which thankfully, she doesn't need anymore after all of his character development. When we finally reach Wheatley, he puts us through his own set of testing chambers that are poorly put together because of his innate stupidity. Since the tests stop working, he decides to kill you in the aptly named chapter, the part where he kills you. Well, this is the part where he kills us. Hello, this is the part where 
I kill you? Because this is the part where he kills you. Once you escape death and finally reach Wheatley, the final boss combines elements from the original game's final boss and mixes it with newer elements like the gels. What makes this final boss so much better though, is the unbelievably awesome ending where you get to shoot a portal at the moon and suck Wheatley out into space. This has to be the coolest fucking way to end a game. And of course, it's even better that GLaDOS saves you from flying into space and shows you how much she's grown by letting you finally leave in peace. And an even kinder gesture is the fact that she sends a companion cube out with you. I want to give GLaDOS such a big hug right now, what a thoughtful way to end things. So yeah, I love Portal 2. It's gotta be my top 5 favorite games of all time, and I think I've explained why I love it well enough. If it wasn't for Portal 2, this franchise wouldn't have meant all that much to me, and hell, if it wasn't for Portal 2, I doubt all of these spin-off games and tie-ins would have happened as well. Portal 1 was a great starting point, but Portal 2 made the franchise everything it is today. As much as I'd be excited for a Portal 3 or anything of the sort, the story ended so well in Portal 2 that I genuinely think it would be best if Valve didn't try to continue it. That seems to already be their approach with the franchise these days, as Portal 1 and 2 are pretty much the only games officially canonized. I'm forever grateful that the community of fans are able to continue the franchise's legacy by making surprisingly great stories like Portal Revolution and Portal Stories Mel. It says a lot about how special Portal is that these massive mods are still being made well over a decade after Portal 2 came out, and we're all still here to have fun shooting portals and solving puzzles. If I could personally thank every single person who worked on any of these games, I would. And I would look you straight in the eye, and I would tell you how special of a contribution you've made to my life and the life of many others. Thank you. All of you. And thank you, viewer, for staying until the very end here. I love you too. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I have. Who knows when I'll make my next video. This one was a long time coming. So whenever that may be, I'll see you then. Have a good one.